What's up everybody and welcome to story time. Today we got another story time and I think it's important to tell this story because I'm seeing some comments on the sections about, and they're on the Z's videos, Aziz, Z's, however you say his name. And there are people that are arguing that Aziz could not have built his body, his physique, if he was drinking and partying every night and on drugs. Now, that couldn't be the furthest thing from the truth. Let me tell you right now. I have seen some amazing physiques in the clubs throughout the years that they always have a party in like five, six nights a week. You know, the only thing they weren't doing is maybe on Monday and Tuesday, they probably were sleeping and, you know, whatever, getting their rest. But they went out Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. Okay, and some of those led to after hours parties where they were at a club till 2 a.m., had about a two hour stint where they would go to somebody's house and get messed up, then go to the, the after hours at like 4 or 5 a.m., stay there until 11.30 in the morning and then go to the beach all day. And then maybe go, you know, take a nap on the beach for a couple hours and then go train. So yeah, it can happen. But let me just start off with story time. So story time takes place in New York City, nightlife, a club called The Sound Factory. Jonathan Peters, resident DJ, every Saturday night. DJ Jonathan Peters spinning the most intense, banging songs you've ever heard in your life. He was the, um, the DJ that remixed My Love Is Your Love by Whitney Houston. Now, some of you may have been to the Sound Factory. Some of you may have heard of the Sound Factory because Victor Martinez used to go there. King Kamali used to go there. Um, a host, a guy, Sister Nino used to go there. A host of other pro bodybuilders used to show up there week after week and just rave till, you know, I mean, the party didn't start till about 3 o'clock a.m. Eastern time in New York. It would go on till about noon time. And then you would leave the sound factory at about noon time and make your way to the tunnel. Oh, no, Twilo. Tunnel or Twilo? Both of them were big clubs in New York, but Junior Vasquez was resident DJ over there. Now, these are two of the biggest DJs in the world, okay? They both spun in New York, both Saturday night resident DJs. And we would, I heard about it through like a friend of mine, my buddy Willie, who was a DJ, went up there to scope it out one year, one weekend in New York. And he came back and he was like, dude, you have got to go to Sound Factory. Hands down, this is the place for you. You, Henry, all your buddies, you got to go. Okay, and let me tell you why. He's like, he's explaining it to us. So we're like, okay, you know, this place sounds pretty badass. All right, well, you know what? A couple weeks from now, we're all going to rent a Dodge Durango, pile everybody in there. And we're going to head to Sound Factory, New York City. So Providence, Rhode Island, midnight, we all meet up. Me, my girlfriend, Willie, his wife, Jayla, Christina, a good friend of ours, and Rebecca, and Henry. So seven of us. Pile in Durango, and we head to Sound Factory. Now the first thing we do is hide all of our drugs. Ecstasy, ketamine, that's pretty much it. Ecstasy, ketamine, shitloads of it. We hide them to get them into the, the, the club. We pop a pill before we get into the club. so that Because it takes a little while for the ecstasy to kick in. And we go wait in line. And you have to be dressed up in a certain look. If you don't look good, the person in the charge of the line will walk right up to you. They're walking around looking at everybody standing in line. They go, you, I don't like your haircut. You look dorky. You're out of here. I'm sitting there going, holy shit. Like, you got to have a look to even get into this club. You can't even, if you don't look cool... If you're not cool, you're not even getting through the door. They're going to charge you 45 bucks to walk through the door, search you like crazy to get in there. So finally, we get searched, we get in there, and we walk up these stairs, and the first thing I see is just beautiful people everywhere. And I'm talking about nobody in this place is out of shape. Everyone is ripped. Everyone is in shape. The guys, the first thing you do is take your shirt off when you get through the door. So all these muscle jacked up dudes walking around anywhere from 180 pounds to 250 pounds, ripped. I mean, in shape, 8%, 6%. All the women, phenomenal bodies. Short shorts or like kickwear pants, which were like the baggy like pocket pants with like a sports bra or just like a bikini top on. And I'm sitting there going, you know, dressed up to the hilt, long hair, just amazing looking people. You go to the bar and they got, I mean, they're selling liquor. They're also selling metric shakes, myoplex shakes for five bucks or six bucks or something like that. You can get a metrics, uh, the myoplex mixed up with some fruit in it or something like that. 
you know, five dollar bottles of water. So I'm sitting there going, Medrex and Myoplex at the bar. That's because all these people were working out and training. They were bodybuilders that were in shape. They were going to this club and they wanted to make sure that they look good. So while they're out there partying and raving and stuff, they're drinking Myoplexes. They're drinking waters. They're drinking juice. They're not drinking alcohol. But they're taking ecstasy and whole massive amounts of it. And once you get there, they're doing cocaine. You can buy cocaine at the club through some of the dealers and stuff. So we go into the bathroom, we take out our drugs, we start popping the drugs, we're doing ketamine, and we start raging. Boom, boom, boom. This place is just incredible. You come down the stairs, and now it's Jonathan Peters' area. So there's just like, just, just waves of beautiful people, in shape, great physiques, beautiful women, guys with their hair perfect, with their physiques, abs, shredded, lower backs, Christmas tree showing, and I'm like, dude, everybody here looks like they just stepped off like a movie set of like, Pain or gain. I mean, it was just insane, right? So we're in the in the club, and you know the drugs start to hit, and the music is banging. This went on till I don't know eleven o'clock the next morning, and when we left the club, finally we were gonna stay in New York at a um, we got a hotel, and it dawned on me. I was like, man, this place is just insane. And this went on. This is where pretty much our drug benders started. Now Thursday night was. Let's see, Metropolis? I think it was Metropolis or Club Hell. Club Hell was Thursday night. Friday night was Metropolis in Providence. So now we would take drugs. Actually, Club Hell started Wednesday night. So Club Hell Wednesday. Polyester's Thursday. Club Hell uh, Metropolis Friday. So we would start on Wednesday taking pills, drinking water, doing ketamine, taking cocaine. Liquid G was a, a, a drug of choice then too, after the club. You couldn't really smuggle that into the club because it was a liquid. So this went on until Saturday night where we drove to New York, three and a half, four hour drive to get to New York, stay there until, I don't know, whatever time. Then we'd drive back to Rhode Island the next day. This is like Sunday during the day at some point. We'd be driving back. Go home, shower, get a little bit of sleep, and go to Barry's, which was a bar in Warwick, Rhode Island, until two o'clock in the morning, and to finally go home and crash. And if we decided not to go to the Sound Factory, we'd be at Metropolis again or the Strand on Saturday night, then go to Stars, which was an after-hour club from 5 o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And we did this consistently week after week after week. And I still walked around 230 pounds with a set of abs, taking steroids, not eating much food, jamming out every freaking week. And you're trying to tell me that his ease couldn't have maintained his 180-pound physique with abs, doing all these drugs and partying. I did it, all my buddies did it, and everybody at the Sound Factory did it. So I'm not, again, digging on his ease. I'm not busting his balls. But his physique easily could have made, been maintained partying around the clock for months at a time for numerous days a week. And I saw it over and over again, especially if he was taking steroids. So that just goes to put the rest. It can be done. No problem. And that's where story time ends. I've done it. My buddies did it. Like I said, not busting his balls. But it's just a fact. I've seen it over and over again with my own two eyes. BioStreetTraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. www.biostreettraining.com is the blog and we're out.